Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. We're not going to waste any time today, we're going to run back to the house and pick up a couple of supplies, because today we're turning these villagers into zombies. And yes, I know I've been talking like turning villagers into zombies would be a bad thing, and for the most part it is, but we have a couple of things we can do that will allow us to cure them from being zombies, and at that point, trading changes completely. For this we'll need to grab some splash potions of weakness and and some golden apples. These just have to be the regular type of golden apples, not the enchanted kind. And you know what? I think we'll bring some blaze rods and some fermented spider eyes so we can brew a couple more splash potions of weakness while we're over there at the village. We'll load all of that into the ender chest because there's one other thing I would like to bring with us and that is some minecarts and rail. We also need to have a quick chat about difficulty because I've mentioned this in a previous episode. The chances of a villager zombifying depend on your difficulty. So in hard difficulty, a villager attacked by a zombie will turn into a zombie villager 100% of the time. On easy difficulty, the villager will be killed by the zombie's attacks, and on normal difficulty, where we're playing right now, it's actually a 50-50 chance between the two. And that is why, for the remainder of this episode, we're going to set the difficulty to hard. We're not going to lock the difficulty quite yet, but I'll do another episode where we do a full discussion of the, the differences between each of the difficulty settings, and we'll probably lock the difficulty on hard from that point. I did that with season one of the survival guide, so it kind of makes sense. Now the sun is coming up, the villagers are wandering around and going about their business for the day. We want to isolate a villager who's basically going to be our test subject, patient zero if you like. I think we'll start with the armorer or one of the toolsmith professions actually, because they're a pretty useful example of why we're doing what we're doing. So I'm going to create a quick corner made out of rails here, and hopefully the armorer will wander back over here in a second from wherever he's just wandered off to. For a bit more of a guarantee here, we're going to turn these blocks here into solid blocks so we can put the rails on them and we'll swing this minecart around the corner and pick up the armorer like so. Corner rails are actually really useful for picking up villagers because the minecart's hitbox extends outside of the hitbox of the rail for a second, allowing it to overlap with the neighboring blocks and picking up the villager as they're standing on them. So we're going to be using corner rails like that for quite a lot of villager transportation. But in the meantime, we're going to transport this armorer to a different location away from the rest of the villagers and notably away from the iron golems because this could be disastrous if the iron golems spot him once we do what we're about to do, which is, not to put too fine a point on it, turn this armorer into a zombie villager. So let's push him outside of the village in this direction. We've got a bunch of rails set up. We're just going to push him manually for now, but you can set up some powered rails and power them so that he can travel at full minecart speed if you want to. Once we're here, we could build a minecart rail across the river, but one of the things I want to try and do is break the minecart, being very, very careful that we hit the corner of the minecart and not the villager himself. We'll place a boat down over here that he can get into and then we'll row him across the river in the boat. Once we're over here we're just going to put the same angled section of rail back out. We're going to break the boat and he's wandered over this way so we're just going to encircle him in rails like so. And you'll notice that mobs don't like to go over rails very much. This villager is now effectively trapped inside of these minecart rails and this will be a useful mechanic for picking up mobs and encouraging them to do what they do a bit later. And the minecart has picked up a sheep in the process but we don't need to worry about that. We're just going to push it around in a circle until the armorer gets close enough to a corner that we can pick him up like that. And now, this is one of the most important things we need to do, we're going to grab a few extra planks and we're going to build a roof over the top of our armorer. This is because when he eventually gets converted into a zombie villager, we don't want him to burn in the sun if we sleep for the night. So it's important to make sure that anything you are zombifying or any zombies that you want to capture for this process end up with a roof over their heads just in case you sleep to make it daytime just for the sake of convenience and you end up burning the villager alive or undead or whatever they happen to be at the time. So this is an armorer we have fully traded with. He is all maxed out, master profession, and right now isn't giving us any discounts on our trade. So if we wanted to trade some iron to him, it's going to cost us four iron ingots per emerald, which is a decent price, but we can do better. And the way we're going to do better is by letting a zombie turn this armorer into a zombie villager and then curing him. So I'm going to hang out far enough away from the village that we shouldn't get any mobs spawning around here, but mobs should spawn happily around this area of the savannah, and hopefully we'll end up with a zombie wandering into where that villager is. In fact, here comes some zombies now, and our villager looks like a pretty tasty snack at the moment. So they're going to wander in towards the villager. They're dealing a little bit of damage to him already. They've actually pushed his minecart outside of that little radius 
obvious, which is actually kind of irritating. But once we arrive on the scene, we will find that they've converted him into a zombie villager. So now he's going to attack us just like any other zombie would. And I'm going to put a very quick roof over his head because I need to sleep for the night and make sure the village across the river doesn't come to any harm. There we go. And while all of the other zombies burn in the sun, the villager over here is safe and sound underneath his little roof. And you might find some of the other zombies taking up shelter with him in the meantime. Now I'm going to head over to the village and just very quickly make sure that all of the rest of the villagers are okay because I did get a little close to the village in the process of that. Honestly, I didn't expect them to push him out of the radius of that little shelter I'd built for him, but no, it looks like the rest of the village is fine. Any other undead mobs around here might burn up in the sunlight, so hopefully nobody got attacked during the night. And across the river, all of the other undead mobs have stepped into the water so they're not burning during the sunlight. That's actually relatively smart of them, but we can just take them out from a distance with a bow, make sure the perimeter around here is relatively secure, and we have a zombified armorer. Since he has stayed in the minecart, he's not gonna be able to leap out and attack us. He's not gonna wander out into the sunlight. It's actually fairly safe to keep him where he is for now. He's also not in danger of despawning as other hostile mobs might do if we got a certain distance away because we've already traded with this villager. So the game knows that we want to keep him around. And for that reason, it's safe for us to run back across the river, fish out some of the stuff I brought with me from my ender chest and get curing. See, even after spending a little bit of time over there getting some ingredients, the zombie villager over here has not despawned. This is not true of all zombie villagers, just ones you have traded with. So if you want to zombify a villager, it's safe to run away from them if you've traded with them once when they were a villager beforehand. Now all we need to do is splash it with a splash potion of weakness, which I'll do from a distance, but you should notice the particles now emerging from the villager, and right click on him with a golden apple. You'll hear this horrible kind of crackling noise and particles will start to emerge from the zombie villager and he will shake, indicating that he is now curing back into a villager. During this time, it's important to protect the zombie villager because this curing process can be detected by other zombies and they may come in and attack the zombie villager during this process, at which point he will take enough damage that he will straight up die. So we want to make sure he's protected. And there are a couple of other things we can do to speed up the curing process. I'm gonna throw down a crafting table over here since I didn't bring one with me. I did bring some iron though and if we craft some iron bars there is actually a chance for iron bars to decrease the amount of time it takes a zombie villager to cure it's a very small increase so you don't need to have these around you all the time but the idea is that you kind of lock up the zombie villager in a cage like this you can actually make 16 iron bars to make a cage around a zombie villager like this which is a pretty convenient amount and if you place beds nearby that also improves the cure time basically encouraging you to lock up these zombie villagers while they are in the process of curing and waiting for them to return to life again having looked up the exact maths behind this on the minecraft wiki you need up to 14 iron bars or beds around and that basically increases the cure time by about 4.2 percent so it's it's not exactly the biggest increase in the world but it does make a difference in the long term. The process of curing a zombie villager takes about three to five minutes on Java Edition. It's a little bit shorter on Bedrock Edition from what I've read, and obviously having the amount of iron bars and beds around is going to have an effect on that process. But once the process is over, you'll hear that noise, you'll get the advancement zombie doctor if it's the first time you've done it, and we have a villager who now seems to be standing up in the minecart again, unlike how he was before when he was a zombie. We're going to break out this set of iron bars here, and I'll reveal the whole reason we've done this in the first place. If we right click on this villager now, you'll see he's giving us massive discounts on everything he trades. The bell has gone down from 36 emeralds to 11. He's now accepting nine coal per trade instead of 15 and pretty much all of the diamond armor with the exception of the helmet, which was a little bit pricier, has been reduced to one emerald per piece. And you might be thinking these are too good to be true. They're not. This is all permanent. I'm going to quickly sleep so I can make sure that no more zombies come out to trouble this guy because we don't need to zombify this guy a second time. But basically, every time you cure a zombified villager, they consider themselves indebted to you permanently. You've effectively saved their lives and that increases your reputation with that villager to the extent where they will offer you incredible discounts on some of the goods they trade. So we can now buy diamond gear for one emerald if we want to. That's how effective this is. We can 
also trade one iron ingot per emerald, which is a massive discount on what it was before, and these discounts will never go away. This villager is your friend for life. Now, the one thing to bear in mind here is that this doesn't affect other players. So if you're doing this on a multiplayer server, it'd be necessary for basically every player to cure the same trader before... Oh, <laughs> well, this is a difficult situation because these pillager patrols are potentially going to endanger our population of villagers. So I'll need to work quite quickly here to get them away from the villagers. However, we have another concern here, and that is this guy. If we kill the banner wearing member of the pillager patrol, he will give us an effect called Bad Omen, and that spells disaster if you walk into a village with it. So we're gonna have to be pretty careful here. I'm gonna aggro one of the pillagers to make sure the patrol walks towards me. We're gonna get them away from our villagers if at all possible. And we're going to try and finagle things a little bit here so that that pillager captain doesn't end up getting killed by us. Now we could have him killed by the remainder of his patrol. That seems like a fairly effective way to do things. We just gotta make sure that they can shoot arrows at him and we can block in the meantime. There we go, okay, he's shooting the captain. We can block the captain's arrows with our shield, like so, and that shouldn't count as us damaging him, so let's see if we can do that a couple more times and hopefully the captain will be taken out without us dealing any direct damage to him. Yes, there we go, okay, perfect. Thankfully, no harm done, and we'll need to make sure we collect that banner before one of the other pillagers picks it up. But we have defeated the Pillager Patrol. Okay, that's a, a bit of a diversion from what I was doing, but that seemed like a pretty urgent situation, and hopefully you'll have an easy enough time taking care of it. If it's not possible for you to finagle things that way so that the patrol captain gets taken out by the rest of the pillagers, then you'll need to get as far away from any villages as possible and grab a cow, drink a bucket of milk, and that should dispel the bad omen effect. Make sure you do that before you run back into the proximity of any other villages. And we'll explain raids in the future, but you really don't want to handle a raid right now if you're not prepared for it. Anyway, back to our friend the armorer. Now he is cured, we're ready to reintroduce him into society. So I'm going to break him out of the minecarts, we're going to row him back across the river, and he should hopefully even return to his old workstation. Let's pop down the boat there, right in front of his path, let's row him back over the river, be very careful to break the boat and not attack the villager himself, and let's push him up onto the shore like so, where we could use some minecart rails or the boat to get him slightly closer to his workstation, but once the workday begins, which it should have already, he should have no problem reintegrating with the village. Yep, there we go, the green sparkles mean he's repaired with his blast furnace and now his trades should refresh as well, meaning that we can trade a bunch of these up to capacity and then grab a bunch more if we need to. So that's how you cure a zombified villager and how zombifying and curing an existing villager can lead to some pretty big benefits. If we wanted to, we could even zombify and cure him a second time and he would offer a further discount on the goods which are still priced at higher than one item. So if we wanted this bell to be available for one emerald, if we wanted to trade him three coal instead of nine, we could end up zombifying him a second time. But honestly, we get enough emeralds from our other traders and we can now buy diamond gear for one emerald. I think that's a pretty fair price. In fact, it's a pretty ridiculous price and this is the point at which villager trading becomes incredible incredibly powerful for people who want to take things to the next level. If you want to have a bunch of backup diamond gear available to you, zombify and cure a couple of the blacksmith professions and you'll never need to use those diamonds again. Now naturally the armorer isn't the only villager that we're going to zombify and cure, because we can do this with other villagers as well, allowing for their trades to take on even more significance to us. Take the Fletcher, for example, who's currently asking 31 sticks per emerald. If we zombify this guy, we can potentially be trading as little as one stick per emerald, which suddenly makes that stick trade even better than some of the other equivalent trades for wooden items, like boats to the fishermen and that kind of thing. Having a permanent discount from our librarians will allow us to get mending books for as low as one emerald, and some of the other really useful supplies like glowstone and bottles of enchanting from clerics, diamond tools from the other blacksmith professions, all of those would suddenly become a lot cheaper. We'd also be able to trade resources a lot more cheaply to folks like the butcher, who could accept one sweet berry instead of ten per emerald, allowing you to farm emeralds just by farming sweet berries. And it reduces the amount of valuable stuff like coal and iron that we could trade to these villagers, although it's worth noting that they'll never increase the amount of emeralds they give you in exchange for goods like this, so you're never going to find them asking for less 
less than one diamond. You can't just get emeralds for free, and they'll never increase the amount of emeralds they give you in exchange, so you're not going to get 20 emeralds per diamond. These prices are pretty much fixed, which is why most players won't bother with the diamond trade, because frankly, we can get an emerald for a stick if we want to, just with a little bit of effort and some zombification, so it's not really worth trading your hard-earned resources when you can trade something a lot more cheap. Now, of course, in order to streamline this process, we're going to be capturing a zombie and keeping hold of him permanently. In order to do that, we will need to trade a name tag from this villager, and we'll need to return to our anvil to rename the name tag. So we're just going to call this one Patient Zero, and we're going to head back across the river to a safe spot away from the village where we can trap a zombie. The center of this spot in the savannah should do nicely. I think we're far enough away from the village that they're not likely to encounter any mobs during the night, and we can set a trap using the minecarts and rails the way we did with the villagers. We're going to clear some of the grass out of an area like so. We're going to set a powered rail over here, and we're just going to make a little loop of minecart rail. We'll set a minecart going on this rail, and it should complete a circuit, although, yeah, the corners do slow it down, so we'll probably put another powered rail on this side as well. Now it should happily go around the circuit on its own, and we can stand in the center of this, luring any zombies towards us, since they will track towards the location of the player. Now as night falls here, we're going to set this minecart going on the track. We could even set another minecart going if we wanted to, since two minecarts could occupy the same track here. And we're also taking advantage of the fact that most mobs will spawn about 24 blocks away from the player or more, so the zombies are going to be spawning around us in a radius. However, a zombie will track a player within 35 blocks, whereas other mobs will typically only track you if you're 16 blocks away, meaning that any zombies that spawn slightly outside the radius of the player are still going to start trying to track towards us, and we can use that to our advantage, avoiding other forms of combat while waiting for a zombie to just walk up and find us. We could always encourage it to by walking a little bit closer. There we go, we've got its attention now, and as it reaches one of the corners of this minecart rail, you'll notice it gets stuck on the minecart rail but pretty soon we've picked up the zombie in the minecart and we can just disable this lever and it will stop in that position meaning we can now build a roof over it as we did with the zombie villager and sleep for the night before we do anything else though we need to make sure this zombie is persistent so we can chuck a couple of items on the ground and see if it picks those up because if zombies pick up items that players have dropped or even items that are loose on the ground because the game won't really differentiate between the two the game will make sure that zombie is persistent so that if you need to recover that equipment from it you can do it without the zombie just despawning while it's holding your diamond sword or whatever. The other way we can make a zombie persistent is to name tag it, because the game assumes that any zombie you've got name tagged is one you want to keep around. The last thing we're going to do here is get a backup zombie just in case, so we've just ended up walking that zombie into a boat. We'll put a quick roof over the top of him as well, and he can be our backup just in case something goes wrong. And I'm pretty sure, although I'm not 100% certain, that zombies riding boats will stay persistent as well. I guess we'll find out as we walk away from this guy and return. But with two zombies captured nice and easily, we're going to sleep for the night, except we won't be able to do it too close to the zombies, because despite how passive they are right now, they are technically monsters that we're trying to sleep nearby. And there we go, daytime is here and we have two zombies trapped. Now in order to make sure that they are close enough to the village that they'll be useful for zombifying these villagers, we're going to move the minecart zombie around a little bit first. But we do need to make sure, of course, that he has protection from the sunlight all the way back to the area where we plan on keeping him permanently. So along the areas where I plan to lay the minecart track, I'm just going to leave a covering of blocks over the top, and that should prevent direct sunlight from above, which might lead to the zombie burning up in the sun. We're going to lay some rail down underneath all of these spruce planks, and ideally every 20 blocks or so we're going to be placing some powered rail. That will just keep the speed of the minecart up to make sure that it can continue to travel without slowing down. Downhill slopes are obviously going to keep the minecart's momentum going a little way as well, so we can probably put a powered rail about here. Since I ran out of rail, we're probably going to stop the minecart on a powered rail there, and make sure we don't power that so it doesn't spring back in the opposite direction. Now it should be safe for us to push this zombie on his minecart rail, although we do need to wiggle him slightly forward so it might make sense to have our shield out so that we can take a hit or two so we can push him forward onto the powered rail. Then we'll place a block here, we'll power the rail, and the zombie should be off on his journey. I'm going to pick up all of the rail that we've used to transport him that far since I didn't bring more than a snack or two of rail with me. And the good news is our friend in the boat over here hasn't actually despawned yet, so that's one less thing to worry about. Our zombie's journey will continue down here until it comes to an end right underneath this 3x3 three three area, just making sure he is once again 
hidden from the sun. I didn't add any more powered rail into this section as a test, but mobs in general have a little bit more momentum than just a minecart on its own, so he's made it there nice and easily. So we can break out all of the rest of this. Now we could even lower the ceiling on this dirt roof if we wanted to. Or let's make it out of something a little bit classier like oak planks. So this zombie can basically be stored here permanently. His name tag so he's not going to despawn, he's got a roof over his head so he's not going to burn up in the sunlight, and we can send the villagers over to him in their own minecarts where he can damage them until they become zombies. We can cure them underneath the safety of this roof, and then we can return them via the same minecarts back to the village where they can be reintegrated into society with some pretty hefty discounts. Here's how our villager zombification setup is going to work. It's going to take advantage of the fact that zombies can attack you when you're on a corner with them like so. So we're looking to get the villagers into this position here where they can have a solid block next to this powered rail which we can power to send them back down the same minecart line back into the village. Just for safety we're going to expand this corner here to make sure that the zombified villager can stay underneath this. We'll need to move them away from the zombie so that they can cure those, so let's make sure we have a second station that they get moved to over here, away from the zombie himself, still sheltered from the sunlight and probably also surrounded by iron bars. And here's where we can take advantage of some fun rail mechanics that involve T-junctions here. So if we want to, we can place a lever next to this which will provide redstone power to this rail. If we flip the lever, it changes the direction of the curve in the minecart track, which will allow us to return the villager to the zombification station if he needs to be zombified a second time to get more discounts or we can flip the rail that way so once he's done curing he can head off back on this track to the village. If the rail is set to this formation then the minecart will just go straight over and go straight to the zombie but if the rail is set in the opposite formation it'll turn around a corner here so that we can check the villagers trades briefly before we send him over to be zombified. We'll need a lever here to make sure we can activate that rail it could also go there if we wanted it to it could go just anywhere adjacent to that powered rail and I guess we'll probably need a lever down here as well just to power that one. And this is where we will need to build a minecart rail over the river because of course if we rode a villager over here they would probably notice the zombie get scared and start to run around making their movements unpredictable and making it harder to trap them in a minecart. So I think just having a permanent bridge over in this direction is going to make a lot of sense. Although we'll probably need to make sure that iron golems can't idly cross the bridge because if they encounter our zombie over there they will try to kill him. Then again that'll probably be simple enough to do once we put down some rails because iron golems like other mobs won't really be interested in crossing rails at all. The whole idea behind mobs not crossing rails is really just to make sure that your own minecart rails that you might want to use for transport don't end up being too cluttered. However it does make for a very useful way to exploit mob AI when you're trying to trap them in circumstances like this. And so with a little section of powered rail here, which will probably just put a dirt block there and a lever next to it like so, we can bring one of our villagers over and it should be simple enough just to row them down here in a boat over land and then get them into a minecart to be sent over here. Let's try this setup out for our first time. So let's begin with the Fletcher, who should be easy enough to get into a boat just by putting it on his workstation. Let's row him down to be our first candidate for the zombification process. Having thought about it, getting him into the minecart is probably going to be hard if I don't include a bend in the rail somewhere, so we're probably going to have to do that there. We'll row him into this little box here so he can't really get out anywhere. We'll break the boat like so, and now he's trapped beyond the rails, so we should be able to get him into a minecart just by rolling a rail around this corner when he is close enough. There we go, now we can switch on that lever. He'll be propelled across the rails, across the river, and hopefully have his first encounter with our friend the zombie. Oh, I left the rails in this formation. Well, we can switch those around. We can put the rail on like so, and we'll need to have a full block behind here to make sure that he leaves with the powered rail on. There we go. And now, hopefully, that zombie should be able to attack him. If he doesn't, though, we might need a backup strategy. If the zombie doesn't attack him right away like this, it's possible that the zombie can't reach him, but I kind of doubt that. I think it's more that the zombie is probably trying to track me since... I am an easy target for a zombie and yep, it looks like he does have his eyes focused on me when he can. So we need to get a little bit further away in order for the zombification process to happen because if we get a little bit further away, the zombie will readjust his targeting towards the villager and we should start to see the villager taking damage. Hmm, maybe not. Maybe we do need to adjust the position of the zombie a little bit. I don't want to let him out of the minecart, but that is another possibility if we need to. As long as the zombie is not on a rail, we could have the villager's rail lead to here. And we 
we just move him along the rail like so, pushing him into range of the zombies attacks, and the zombie can definitely attack me from there. Let's see what he does to the villager. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now the villager is taking damage, and hopefully he should stay in that minecart, and nothing bad will happen to him except he turns into a zombie, which you might consider a bad thing, but is a very good thing for us. There we go. We've moved him around to the next phase of the process, we should be able to splash him with a potion of weakness and then feed him a golden apple. And now the curing process should begin. And that's our Fletcher cured. Let's see what he's got going on here. 25 stick trade. Looks like the flint trade is a little bit discounted as well. And now he's trading a bunch of stuff. One for an emerald or one emerald for whatever he's trading. That's very nice. I think it is probably in our best interests to bring that stick trade down a little bit further though. So I think we're going to test sending him back into the system like so. And ah, yes, we might have to reduce this to one powered rail to get it to work properly. Oh, but now the proximity of the zombies minecart is actually pushing him off that powered rail. And I, I didn't want to do this, but I think we might have to let the zombie out. The wandering trader has turned up to see the show, although he's uh, still a little bit frightened of the zombie and he's trading mm, cactus. Actually, we might end up taking advantage of that since I still haven't found a desert. So let's see what we can do here. We'll need some stairs. We'll need to surround the zombie in solid blocks, basically, to make sure he doesn't leave this place when we end up breaking the minecart. We're going to have him standing on a slab like so. We've had to very carefully break that out and immediately place a slab to make sure that he stands there. We can put a slab over his head there as well. Now let's see if his minecart still interacts with the villager's minecart, which it does. Okay. In that case, we're going to block this off completely to make sure that the zombie can't jump out into another space. We'll place a stair block here to make sure that he's not going to get out into this space and we'll try to... There we go. Now he should be standing in that space. And if we open this out, the zombie won't be able to walk up out of that space. He needs more headroom in order to do that. But it's just a little bit scary looking. All right, one more try for our Fletcher. Let's see if he gets in there now. Yep, looks like the zombie is hitting him fine. There we go. And then we'll return him to the curing station where he can get cured. Perfect. Little bit of rearranging with our limited amount of rails, but we got there in the end. In the meantime, I'm a little bit concerned because we have had another disappearance and it's nothing to do with me. I, I get that I'm disappearing villagers over there to be zombified and cured right now, but these villagers seem to have lost one of their number. We still, thankfully, have our mending villager over here. And in fact, he's trading me for slightly better prices because the armorer has been talking to him and spreading the word that I'm a good dude, uh, I guess. But unfortunately, our silk touch librarian seems to have gone missing. He doesn't turn up for work. I haven't seen him around during meeting times. It seems like something has caused him to disappear. And I'm fairly certain he wouldn't have walked out onto this campfire either because it's very difficult, nigh impossible actually, for mobs with a small enough hitbox like these villagers to walk out that way. So either we've had a situation where a pillager patrol like the one we encountered earlier has spawned in the village, taken out one of the villagers and then the golems have dealt with them or they've despawned, or some aspect of the architecture here in the village is leading to them suffocating in a block somewhere. Maybe when they get out of bed, they take a bit of suffocation damage and then whatever bed they have paired to led to them taking damage repeatedly. I'm not certain. I am going to look around just in case there's like a hole in one of these stacks of melons that they might be dropping into and then they can't make it back to their beds and stuff, but I don't think there are many of those left. I'm fairly certain I got rid of most of the holes in the landscape. So I just need to be a little bit more vigilant about the occupants of this village and make sure they don't wander off too far. Otherwise, something might happen to them that I can't really control. So maybe we'll end up making some sort of perimeter wall for this village in the hope that whatever is killing them isn't spawning inside of a certain area. Now this Fletcher is trading us 18 sticks per emerald, which is definitely an improvement on the discount he was giving us previously, and some more of his other trades have gone down a bit as well. We could keep zombifying this guy and curing him until he's trading us one stick for one emerald permanently, but I think for now we're going to send him back over to the village, and hopefully, if the llamas will get out of the way, this is the, the one exception, unfortunately, to mobs avoiding standing on rails, is the wandering trader dragging dragging his llamas all over the place. We're going to let our Fletcher wander his way back over to the village, and we're going to grab another villager to cure for some discounts. But since you folks know the ropes at this point, I'm probably going to cut away, do a live stream where we cure a few more of these, and we'll come back to a whole lot more discounts. 
Hey folks, welcome back. So I've had a pretty good time over the last little while zombifying and curing these villagers and getting discounts. Let's talk to the butcher, for example, who is now asking one of every single item he trades in exchange for an emerald. So that's a pretty awesome selection of trades. We have a couple of the others as well. The toolsmith over here is the one I decided to zombify and cure because he was the one who traded the diamond hoe and shovel. So we now have those along with a bit of overlap with the weaponsmith. We've even ended up zombifying the farmer over here and the stonemason who works in that shed over there. This guy here is now asking for fewer wheat and potatoes for his emerald trades, but also selling us golden carrots and glistering melons for an emerald as well. And as we go and visit the stonemason over here, his trades are also reduced. So now one clay ball per emerald means we can definitely capitalize on the amount of clay. And yes, this does all feel very capitalist, but you know what? It's part of the mechanics of the game and it's a little bit of fun to mess around with this stuff and really see what we can get out of these villages. Villages. Another fun aspect of this is that many of the villagers will share your good reputation to other villagers in the community and the discounts that they give you are also reflected in villagers that we haven't even tried to zombify and cure. For example, the leather worker over here is now giving us massive discounts on the leather trade and all of this, the other goods that he sells or buys and we haven't actually zombified that guy at all. The same goes for the cartographer over here who is hiding in the crowd right now but once again yes a lot of these trades are discounted purely on the merits of gossip from the other villagers. We've zombified the cleric once so he's giving us a bunch of discounts including a half price on the rotten flesh trade but there are definitely a couple of others around here. I think one of the other toolsmiths, yes this toolsmith here with the axe trade because that overlaps with the weaponsmith. I didn't bother zombifying him but he's still offering it to us for a single emerald. So we're actually getting some good prices out of ones we didn't even bother to zombify. The same goes for the fisherman over here who's now asking for a single tropical fish or puffer fish in exchange for an emerald. There are also some other very useful trades that we haven't yet explored, like the fact that librarians after a certain tier will trade you glass. They will also buy books off you for emeralds and they'll buy one book off you for one emerald. They'll sell you a bookshelf for one emerald. You can break that bookshelf down into three books. Those three books can be sold back to the librarian for three emeralds and then you can buy three more bookshelves and basically you can multiply your emeralds at that point. And then the glass you buy from the librarians can be crafted into 16 glass panes which you can sell to the cartographer for one emerald apiece if you end up with decent enough discounts from the cartographer and that way you can make a bunch more emeralds, buy a bunch more glass from the librarians and exploit that trade loop until you have as many emeralds as you want. So now we have these permanent zombification discounts in our midst, we are doing pretty well with these villagers and that is most likely where we would end villager week if not for the mystery of why some of these villagers have disappeared. So I spent a bit of time investigating this after my Twitch stream chat reminded me that you can actually look up console logs from your Minecraft gameplay sessions and this might be familiar to folks who've done some server hosting for Minecraft servers because it's the same as the console log that you will find in the back end of a server host. And what this will give you is a breakdown of stuff that happens in the world, things like advancements, when the game saves, and when you exit a world and it saves the entire world. This also, behind the scenes, it doesn't do this in the in-game chat, but it will track when villagers get killed. And throughout this episode, it's been tracking when my villagers have been zombified. For example, the first time we did this, it says that an armorer was slain by a zombie, and it tells you where. You'll notice that shortly after that we obtained the zombie doctor advancement for curing our first villager. And if you scroll down through the console log, you'll see that after we name tag one of the zombies, it will actually say the Fletcher was slain by patient zero, which was what we named the zombie earlier. And then scrolling up in between those two messages, we find the notice that the librarian had drowned. And I actually went back through the console logs for my previous gameplay sessions where the farmer disappeared, and I found that the farmer had died at exactly the same spot by exactly the same method. They had both drowned. Fortunately, the console log actually prints the coordinates of where exactly that happened. And that led me to this ditch right here. There is an inlet from the river here that's basically been caused by a cave carver, effectively cutting into the terrain here and creating a flooded cave since it's basically level with the waterline over here and some of the cave's neighboring rivers and oceans can be flooded. So what seems to have happened 
is that both the librarian and the farmer that we have lost have wandered out of the village in this direction. They try and pathfind to a block over here. They drop below the surface of the water and they get stuck in this position. This is the death spot of both the farmer and the librarian that we lost while we were working with this village. And they just seem to have got caught underneath this block and been unable to float back up to the surface. So what I'm going to do is take some dirt and cover this place up because it does not deserve a place in my village. So now, hopefully, that should be all taken care of. There may still be a couple of places where the villagers can dip into the water, but for the most of the time, they will float on top of the water in the same way that a player does. But I think I should let you folks know, for the safety of your villages, especially if you're working in this same village, but if you happen to be working in other villages, in your own worlds, cover up areas like this. Cover up these trenches of water, these ditches. Any holes in the landscape that you find around your village, treat them as hazards for the villagers because in the long run, it might end up saving your villagers' lives. And even though it might seem kind of ironic that we've zombified a bunch of villagers in this episode, we also cured them. And it's a lot better having these folks around to trade with. So I figure on that note, that's probably where we're going to wrap up this villager-focused week of the Minecraft Survival Guide. I do hope you've enjoyed these episodes and hopefully you should be able to prosper and your villagers should live long. Thank you so much for watching. My name has been Pixelriffs. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.